Mr. Kasyanov, thank you very much indeed for giving us your time this afternoon. In June, you said that you had temporarily left Russia. Are you now a permanent exile? It depends on how we uh, judge this temporal or permanent. I believe absolutely temporal because just my vision is that the the situation will change uh, rapidly, and I think just few months uh, left uh, until we see just great changes, great changes in the whole situation. And I believe in that time you will ask me, and I could predict just when I come back to Russia. Well, I will come specifically to the political changes that you imply uh, may be imminent. But I suspect, given your experience of high office, uh, you would agree with me that military changes have to take place. What is your objective assessment of the military intervention, now patently outright war and invasion of Ukraine? Yeah, I think, I think just we see already for a few weeks very successful offensive operation of Ukrainian army. And Mr. Putin uh, have nothing to, to, to counter. And in fact, uh, he very desperate. And that's why he had to call mobilization, although he understands it's a very unpopular me um, uh, measure. Uh, there, it's very difficult decision for him. He call it um, um, uh, say partial mobilization, but de facto it is uh, general mobilization, and that is beginning, as I already previously said, beginning of Putin's end, because of the simple reason. The general mood of population in Russia started to change. Even among those people who had a neutral attitude to Mr. Putin, or even those who supported Mr. Putin and supported him in this war, they now started to reconsider this, because just now mobilization touches every family in Russia. And people asking questions, what for, before they close their eyes, thinking something just special operation, etc. Our great Putin will win, as always. But today, they started to, to, to asking questions, and propaganda cannot provide them with the appropriate answers. You suggest there, in an absolutely intriguing answer, that it's going badly for Putin and that he has very few alternative options. Of course, he has talked quite openly about the terrifying option of tactical nuclear weapons, which prompted President Joe Biden to say on, uh, on Thursday that we are as closer to Armageddon now than we, uh, than we have been since the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, in the 1960s. Do you share that assessment? Uh, I share concern and, uh, and the crea creation of uh, uh, fear, creation of danger, Mr. Putin undertaking. And in fact, in fact, uh, uh, Mr. Putin had in his pocket two last cards: one of them mobilization, another nuclear threat. Uh, I continue to believe I could be mistaken, but I continue to believe that Mr. Putin will not use nuclear weapon. If it's the case, I think he already heard from Mr. Biden and other Western leaders that the, the consequences would be catastrophic for Russia and maybe personally for Mr. Putin. Mr. Putin is not an army general who is prepared to die on the battlefield. He is a KGB agent who should provoke the situation and quickly to escape not to be responsible for that. Mr. Putin already too deep on this, but he's still thinking how to escape and he's not going to die. That's why I think he will not use this. What we can see could be also very dangerous that Mr. Putin's attempts to destroy infrastructure, civilian infrastructure in Ukraine to, to devastate economy further on. Right now, there's devastation already reached like uh, 37 percent economists already just making their assessments. He could destroy destroy it even further on. That's what the the danger. That's why I think the Western support of by supplying of equipment and training Ukrainian army that's crucial in this period of time. As promised, I now want to take you back to uh, the crucial point you made at the top, uh, and that is, as it were, the end is nigh. You've already mentioned the, uh, the, the mobilization of reservists. Uh, and Zelensky said, uh, you know, we've defeated the professionals. Now they send us the amateurs. But the reaction to the mobilization on the streets of Moscow and St. Petersburg and elsewhere was very profound. Was that street reaction the start of the end for Putin? 
Yes, it's only starting, an already starting point. Just we see this uh, social unrest, but it's uh, not not much and not enough for that. But it's growing. Only one week uh, pass, and uh, and I think just uh, that's will be absolutely just increase of social tension and increase of uh, social unrest, and that's what we'll see in Moscow at less because because in Moscow mobilization not on such a great level as it happening right now in the remote regions when just um, uh, hundreds and dozens of people mobilized and already just sent to the to the to the forests as they say for training but they're reporting that there is no training they're simply spending their time there that's another issue of uh, i would say uh, unprofessionalism of the whole system mr putin created yeah. but uh, to- talking about just people's mood that's definitely started started to change in considerable manner you yourself were the victim of persecution uh, and know many people within your own political movement as well as former political allies when you served in the highest of offices uh, in Russia. Is that persecution, that repression getting worse right now as we speak? Uh, in terms of me, I've never been under persecution. I was under blackmailing and under just just uh, television uh, fake uh, just stories about me but i had never was under persecution big they never n- never produced anything like that yet because there was no reason to do this i believe it and they will do it though but for criticism of course that is the reason why I left Russia, because just when they adopted this legislation that for criticism you can be put in jail for 10 15 years that's what I uh, I decided not to uh, to take this risk, not to live with this risk with my family and my collaborators already just few of them already in jail and just they uh, looking for the, the they 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 can get just uh, ten year of sentence uh, sentence to the jail. That is what is happening. That's repression. It's still it's still individual repressions, but it's demonstrative and very tough, very tough, and people in shock. What's going on? Historically, any any student of Russia will know uh, that the the ordinary men and women of Russia do not take well to defeat. Is the perception of defeat on the battlefield something that will further turn ordinary citizens of Russia against Vladimir Putin? Hundred percent correct. That's what. That's what um, I would say. We, as opposition, believe what should happen because just the if Mr. Putin not necessarily only looked, but in reality defeated, it means just the whole whole population would start reconsidering everything he did before. Even those as they believed positive things, which I don't think just there was positive things, but for people that's very important. And just to see Mr. Putin as he made a mistake as he is defeated because and right now mobilization in fact that's already a recognition that his special military operation failed because just before he said I will make this I will make denazification demilitarization of Ukraine and now he calling the whole country people please save me Mr. Putin save my face save me Mr. Putin and people just started thinking this would he promise something and now they have to die in the battlefield they don't know for what my final two questions to you are linked the first is do you believe that it is more likely that you will be able to return to Russia in a politically victorious fashion, or that the oligarchs, because money is money, will get in there and make changes ahead of democracy? Uh, that's a difficult question. I think just we all would like just that um, the collapse of Putin's regime would leave the, this, for the situation that a democratic opposition could again regain, reinvigorate just this its activity and lead people and describe to them. And right now, I believe that oligarchs will not be able to foolish people as it sometimes happened in the 90s. Just right now, they have already experienced uh, uh, how just to overcome problems and what problems could 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 raise and like how to overcome them and and how to tackle them. That's why I think just and we all just know oligarchs, not Putin's oligarchs. Putin's oligarchs would be I would say immediately uh, diluted or something like that. But uh, actual uh, producers, actual owners of enterprises, that's important. That's important because it's big business. It's also part of Russia. We have very just low level of middle class, low level of small enterprises, but big business still 
plays a considerable role. And uh, I think just we will be able, because just, in fact, I and my collaborators, we know all these people, and all these people, in fact, of course, would like changes. They would like to live in a normal country with the European, with the democratic uh, strengths and uh, just a real market economy, a real market economy, not just uh, operated by Mr. Putin, by his just uh, unclear and in others, market and should should prevent it, should, should should lead this and state only should regulate but not compete but right now putin have a competition with private businesses of course private businesses always loses sure and as a former finance minister and prime minister you are uh, uniquely well qualified to comment upon that which takes me to my final question uh, it's an honor to talk to you and to hear such candid answers and i see what your vision is uh, of russia but having had this conversation with me, do you make yourself even more vulnerable? Um, of course, of course, I'm, as a normal person, of course, I'm, uh, uh, I wouldn't say scared, but uh, of course I have attention. Uh, uh, that's why just not only conversation with you, but all, uh, but it is also just very candy discussion, I agree. Uh, I, I just giving my direct answers because just it's not time just to hide. It's time to 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 show people what the reality is, and just I'm also speaking to um, Russian media, which uh, on the internet only exist, and uh, uh, foreign media, so that our friends in the West should understand what's going on, and they should understand exact answers and those those particular features which uh, um, I would say belong to Russia, so they don't understand Russian reality. We are not a standard European country. We would like to be a normal, but we have some special features, as any nation has. But in Russia, we have specific features because of KGB rule right now. And we should overcome this. Mikhail Kazyanov, it's been an honor to be a part of that process. Thank you for spending you time talking much. to us here this Thank afternoon. In the program. Thank you.